Hey guys, it's finally springtime. Winter is done. I'm going to show you 15 things you need to do to prep your house for the summer that could also lower your energy bill. Let's get started. Number one on the list to help cool down your house for the summertime is your ceiling fan. Now ceiling fans typically have two directions, clockwise and counterclockwise. One's an upward motion, one is downward motion. In the wintertime, you typically want to have an upward motion where it takes the warm air and brings it up. In the summertime, you want to set the ceiling fan to counterclockwise, which is a downward pushing motion. It'll start pushing all the cold air that's coming out of the top vents down into the bottom. This will help cool your house and let your furnace and AC work more efficiently. To do this is very simple. If you have an older ceiling fan, there's usually a switch that you can flip and it'll reverse the rotation. If you have a newer ceiling fan, kind of like this one, there's typically a button that you just press on your remote and I'll do it for you. Check this out. Number two on the list for preparing your house for the summertime and lowering your energy cost is switching out from incandescent light bulbs to LED lights. An incandescent light bulb gets really hot and emits all that heat down on you as you're trying to get cool in your house. In the process of getting really hot, it also drives the energy cost up. An estimated energy annual cost for one of these incandescent light bulbs is $7.23 a year, versus on the other side, you have the LED, which is only $1.56 a year. It's a simple solution and has drastic changes. Number three on the list for preparing your house for the summertime is replacing your filter. A lot of people don't do this or they do it way too late. Some people maybe even do it once or twice a year. One to two inch thickness of filters are supposed to be replaced between one and three months, and the three to four inch filters are to be replaced every six to nine months. There's a couple of different furnaces out there. There's a wall or ceiling mounted furnaces like this, like my house, where this goes on the grates on the inside of the house where it sucks the air in. And on the other furnaces are essential ones. Those are the ones that are in your garage. They're very easy to replace. Most of the time you just take the cover off and stick it in there. Of course, replacing the old one. The only thing that's really important to keep in mind is the size of that filter. Usually you can tell by the existing one that's already there. This is a 20 by 20 by one inch. And the last most important part is the direction of the flow. There's a nice little convenient little arrow. Make sure you follow the direction of the flow when you install it. Number four on the list to help cut down energy costs on your home's energy bill during the summer is getting yourself a smart thermostat. Now this thermostat's roughly around 15 years old. It's the original one that came with the house and the basic parts about it is there's a cool off and heat. There's no auto section except for the fan. The big problem with that is at nighttime if the temperatures drop, it will still be set to cool and when it does warm up in the rest of the house, it'll come up to the cool section that was set there. It didn't switch back and forth. By getting yourself a simple smart thermostat, which there's a lot of different variations from having one for about 70 bucks to one as far as $250, you can have an auto feature and a lot of memory setting sections that will allow for it to program itself to regulate the temperatures using your furnace and AC unit more efficiently. This is a Honeywell T5 thermostat. It has all the features that I need. I used it on my last house. It worked great. To switch this out, most of the time you don't even need an electrician. You can do it yourself. Just follow the simple instructions. And just like that, setup took me about 15 minutes and we're all ready to have our furnace and AC unit work efficiently in this house. I want to thank the sponsors of today's video, Tide. Hey, when's the last time you cleaned your washing machine? Well, just like a car, it needs maintenance. And maintenance for what? Scrud. It's the scrud that causes your washing machine to stink or smell, especially these front loading ones. Let me show you the scrud. Folks, I'd like to introduce you to scrud. See all this nasty gunked up buildup? This is the back part of the drum. This is the front part of the drum. This stuff reeks of sewage. Tide washing machine removes the scrud buildup. All right, let's put this puppy back together. It has an oxygenated formula and specially designed surface active ingredients that dissolve the scrud buildup on the walls of the tub that you can't see unless you take the washing machine apart. You just use one pouch a month and it's around $10 for a pack of five at Amazon, Target, or Walmart. Use it without any clothes in the washing machine, just follow the instructions on the back. The cycle's done, let's take it apart and see how she looks. All right, so this is after one cycle of Tide washing machine cleaner. It smells fresh. It smells like a washing machine should smell. No crazy, nasty smells. Clean clothes start with a clean washing machine, folks. Click the link in the description to pick up your order today. Now let's get back into this video. Let's go. Number five on the list to help cool down your house is getting yourself an attic fan. 
As the sun is beating down on the house, the top part of the house that gets heated up first is the attic. And attics can get between 120 and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. After that, all we have is the insulation in our attic to help keep the temperatures in our house relatively reasonable. Typically, every roof has what are called ridge vents or roof vents to help for the heat exchange. But when it's 100 degrees outside, there's not a lot of heat that could actually escape. By installing an attic vent, it helps push all that hot air out of the attic, helping reduce the temperatures inside your house. An appropriately selected attic fan per your square footage can lower up to 50 degrees inside your attic, coming from 120 to 150, bring it down to at least 100 or below. In turn, that could lower your temperature inside your house up to five full degrees. Here's how crazy cool about this thing is, it's already working. <laughs> There's no wires, no nothing, right out of the box. Boom solar, boom fan, let's install. Installation is super simple. You wanna find mostly the tallest part of your roof as heat rises to the top. Cut the hole between the rafter that's appropriate for the attic fan. The hole for this specific van needs to be 14 and a half inches wide. Pry up any existing roofing nails around the hole that you cut out. Apply sealant around the flashing, the bottom of the fan, and slide it up underneath the shingles. Once the top of the shingles are covering the top flashing of the fan, secure the bottom parts of the fan with screws or roofing nails. Then apply the same sealant over the screws to prevent any water seeping into it. This might feel like it's not waterproofing your roof, but imagine this whole fan acting like one giant shingle and it's continuing the pattern on your roof. The best part about this attic fan is that it's solar powered, so I don't need to hire an electrician to come install the wiring for it. It simply operates by solar. I can feel that it's so crazy seeing it work solar. And there we go. We just installed our attic fan. Let's get down safely. Number six on the list is heat reducing film. It works exactly like tinting the windows on your car by applying a film over the existing windows that has heat waves kind of radiating through and UV rays coming through. Something like this is a great solution to get over the windows and help keep your house cool. A very easy installation, simply clean your windows the way you would normally. Then taking a spray bottle, having a solution of both water and a little bit of children's shampoo sprayed on your window. Once that's done, let it sit there and peel the backing on the film. Apply the sticky part to the window and also spray more of that solution on the back of the film, making it easy to apply. Don't worry, this is all gonna evaporate later. Make sure you have about an inch overlap all the way around. We'll cut this part off later. Now that you have it centered, using a squeegee, squeegee out all the air bubbles out through the sides. Once you get the film positioned in place and all the bubbles are out, use a squeegee or a credit card to work as a guide and a very sharp blade to start trimming off all the excess film. You'll have about one or two sixteenths gap on each side, allowing for any extra bubbles or air or shampoo to come out and evaporate. Number seven on the list for preparing your house for the summertime is adequate attic insulation. Now, depending on the climate that you're in, you're supposed to have a certain type of insulation and the certain amount of it. If you're in a southern climate, something warmer, you're looking for a product called R38, and the fill is supposed to be between 13 and 14 inches. Now, if you're in a colder climate, like the northern climate, you're looking for a product R49, and the fill is supposed to be between 16 and 18. Make sure you have the proper amount, and if it's on the wrong side, Go get yourself a couple of bags at Home Depot or Lowe's, rent their machine to start spreading it out, and you're gonna have far more efficient both cooling and heating in the house. Number eight on the list to help cool down your house in the summertime is shading. As you're trying your hardest to help cool down your house on the inside and keep the heat outside, through windows, you still have solar radiation that comes in and interferes with everything. By using a solution like blinds, but even better yet, thick Roman shades like this, you're creating a huge barrier. These simple lessons we learned when we were kids, sitting underneath a shady tree, and it actually worked, so it'll work for your house as well. Number nine on the list is getting your AC unit checked out, and specifically having the guys come out and fill up the levels of Freon in it. The reason I know this is because this specific unit did a terrible job cleaning this house the summer of 2021, where we had a record-breaking heat wave that lasted almost two months. The guys came over here, checked the levels, and it turned out that it had tremendously low levels, therefore overworking the compressor. They also said that the unit was leaking over the course of eight years at least, having a very small, tiny leak, which can cause tremendous amount of wear and tear. They filled it up completely to the top, and it works 
perfectly and the house couldn't be cooler. Something like that can run you between two and 300 bucks depending on how much Freon you use and their service fee, but it was well worth that investment. Number 10 on the list, something that might help cool down your house more efficiently is you might consider getting yourself a fan booster. The way fan boosters work, it replaces the existing wall or floor mounted vent cover. It inserts and secures with two screws on the sides. It still has a way for you to have passive airflow just like a regular vent cover would have, but by having fans that are built inside of it, it works as a turbo sucking and blowing all the air that's trying to get into that room. This particular unit has its own built-in thermostat, so you could set your trigger settings on heat or cooling, depending if you wanna heat or cool your house. It'll only activate when it reaches that temperature, make it a little bit more efficient. This unit also has 10 speeds of airflow, so depending how much cooling or how much heating you wanna help do in that room. Simply just plugs into the existing outlet, set your temperatures, and set your speeds. And as they can see, at 10, works like a normal fan that you put on the floor. If you put something on maybe five, you can barely even notice it. So it's not gonna be distracting. Great investment if you wanna help cool down your house this summer. I'm gonna cover 11, 12 together because they go hand in hand. Pressure wash and pest control. You wanna pressure wash your house because being cleaning, you just came out of this cold winter, all the dirt and debris was running down with snow. So give yourself that clean slate, but also pest control. And that's why you also wanna pressure wash because as the temperatures increase, the critters wanna hide as well. So they find little shading into the siding, into the nooks and crannies. They start destroying the wood. So you wanna pressure wash them out of there and have some kind of either subscription chemical based thing, or you can go buy the chemicals yourself and spray that area, specifically the perimeters and all the nooks and crannies that they wanna get into. If they're in there, they're not only gonna destroy your siding, but they're also gonna start finding their way into your house, and that's where they're not welcome. Me personally, I have like a subscription-based thing where a local pest control company comes out. They'll set up these little traps in my garage and all these other areas and any entrance that basically into the house, but also they'll start spraying the perimeters outside and anything that has potential of any of those critters getting into place. It works out really well and it's very convenient for me. Number 13, to help cool down your house in the summertime and lower your energy bill is air circulation. If you happen to have a ceiling fan in every single room, open the doors and let the air circulate throughout the rest of the house. Now, when you get to the parts of the house that don't have a ceiling fan or that air can't get there, or maybe you don't have enough ceiling fans, you can have external sources like this. By positioning these floor fans and the having the doors open in all the rooms, you're allowing the air to circulate throughout the house, letting the cold air that we just cooled down work a little bit more efficiently and taking the ease off of your furnace and AC unit to help them do a little bit better job and help keep your house temperature a little more tolerable. Number 14 on the list, you might consider getting yourself a dehumidifying machine. Now, the way humidity works is it has suspended particles in the air of moisture, and it's kind of like being in a wet sauna, it gets really hot. To counter that, a dehumidifier machine will extract that moisture out of the air. If you're in a southern part of the country, like maybe Florida, you can expect humidity up to like 90% in the summertime. Now, we're in a northern climate, humidity here gets between 15 and maybe 30 at 90 degree temperatures in the summertime, so we don't have any need for that, meaning I don't have one, but I did link one right over here. This is a great one from Amazon. This will extract up to 50 pints of humidity out of the air into a container and it can lower your humidity in a 1500 square foot room up to about 40 to 50 percent. If it was my house I'd probably put that unit probably somewhere in that living room maybe the bedroom to allow for better work and more comfortable living environment. And running up to number 15 how to get your house ready for the summertime cool it down and saving you energy costs. You've exhausted all your resources. What you can do is apply for a residential energy audit. And this can happen through many different ways. There's either private companies you can hire, or sometimes even your power company offers a service to even some areas that are free. And what they do is they send a professional out to look at your home's structure, both externally and internally, and then they start evaluating the energy and the efficiency of it. And then they'll help you find where the culprit is to help run your house on a more efficient base, keeping it cool in the summer and keeping it, well, tolerant in the wintertime. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. It does mean the world to me. If you're brand new to the channel and you like videos like this or any kind of home improvement project or maybe a home remodel project, make sure to hit the subscribe button and be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll know exactly when these videos come out. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear them down in the description below. Connect with me on my social media. All the links will be in the description as well. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya. Bye.